Hi everyone, Kaylee Michelle here. I know you can't see my face yet, but I just want to let you know we're going to give everybody just a few minutes to join um, the webinar. I know some people are not quite familiar with um, with Google Hangouts, so it might take them just a little bit of time to to join in with us. So hang tight in there, and we'll get started real soon. Hi everyone. Okay, so um, I'm really excited to be here today with you guys and I just want to say there might be some people popping in and out, um, so just try and ignore it and uh, bear with me. This is my first time using Google Hangouts for a uh, webinar um, and so it's a new format to me too, so um, I apologize in advance if we have any uh, technical glitches. Um, so. If you just want to, um, if you don't mind in the chat, just telling me that you can hear me okay and uh, you, the screen, you can see everything fine, then um, that would be awesome and then we can uh, get going. So,
Um, if you're not familiar, on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see and hear me. Thank you, Kylie. <laughs> on the left-hand side of the screen is um, the toolbars. Um, you'll notice there um, at the top is the chat. Um, so you're welcome to um, chat in there during the webinar. Um, and then um, there's some other fun things in there. Not that you're probably going to use most of them. Um, uh, I'll point out now the Q&A box is there as well. So as uh, questions pop into your head um, and you think of them, please put them in there and then I will address them later on. Um, for those of you that are um, just streaming in, um, I apologize that we didn't have enough seats. All these seats to actually set sit in on the webinar were full. Um, so I'm hoping that um, those that are um, actually in the call will um, inspire some great questions that will, will help you as well. So, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to be um, sharing my screen with you so you can see the um, lovely webinar. So we're here today to talk about um, uh, creating professional wedding day timelines. Um, so initially, you know, for, for me, I saw this as a great tool for brides who were doing most of the wedding planning and possibly the day of themselves, but was overwhelmed by the response of the amount of wedding professionals and planners um, that wanted to get in on the action. And I love that because we're always learning and we're always growing from each other. So. Um, I'm really happy to gear this um, webinar to both um, DIY brides and also to aspiring and novice wedding planners and also other wedding professionals because a lot of the times we are all intimately involved in that um, the timeline uh, part of the day, especially the creation, and so um, we can share that valuable knowledge with our brides. So. Some of the things we're going to cover today, the do's and the don'ts of creating professional timelines. Um, I'm going to share with you my personal tricks and tips. I'm not saying that they are revolutionary or that they're something you've never heard before, but they truly are the tools and the things that I have um, harnessed to um, perfect, well not perfect, but um, finesse my own craft of creating um, timelines. And I truly believe that um, they will really help you. Um, then we're going to move into a real wedding example so you can see um, some of these um, tips uh, applied to a, an actual wedding timeline. And then finally, I know it's really important to leave some time to do some Q&A because um, there's always questions whether they were are um, pertaining to what we're talking about today or just in general as far as the wedding planning process or the business of weddings. So. What you need to do the webinar is um, a copy of the wedding day timeline template. Um, this is available through the Be My Own Wedding Planner website. With the download of the preview chapter, you will get the template as well as a finished example. There might be some of you on the call I know that registered that have actually um, have a copy of the timeline from um, the Kaylee Michelle Events blog. That template is a, is a great resource too. It's not exactly the same, um, but both of them will work just fine. You'll need a note-taking device or good old-fashioned pen and paper, which I tend to use a lot when I'm attending webinars. And don't feel frantic about writing absolutely everything down. Um, there will be a recording that I'll make available for you. And also, if you do want a copy of the actual slideshow itself um, with the points, I am happy to send that along to you for you to review at a later date. So. A little bit about me. Um, some of you are great friends and familiar faces, and I just love that you're here. It makes me so excited. Um, and a lot of new faces, too. And so um, I just want to say thank you so much for spending some of your Saturday with me and um, for allowing me to share my own experiences. And I truly help, hope that it is beneficial to you. So I am Kaylee Michelle Wienstra. I own a boutique wedding planning company in Vancouver, Canada called 
Kaylee Michelle events. Um, and when I say boutique, I mean boutique. Um, I cater to a very niche market, and um, I am very much about quality over quantity that allows me to invest in my clients. So I'm also the author and the creator of the Be My Own Wedding Planner uh, kit. Um, we're still in the pre-launch phases, and this awesome webinar is a part of that. And um, I look forward to um, launching that in early 2015. So I am blessed to be a business coach and a mentor um, to uh, other wedding professionals and to be a speaker on um, particularly area of wedding planning, but a lot of times I speak on marketing and brand management um, and, uh, and just social media influence. So my heart um, at the end of the day, while it seems you know very much wrapped in the world of weddings, my heart is to help um, just inspire others to focus on what matters. Um, and truly, when we boil that down, I believe that it's leaving a legacy um, with our life of love and of service. So we have been blessed with incredible talents and gifts and resources. Um, and I believe that those were not meant to just glorify our own name in life, that they were meant to be passed on and to bless others. And so whether that is in the biz in your business or in your art or your craft that you choose to share with the world um, or whether that's through the relationships you have um, through family and and friends um, and through service so so that's a little bit about me in a nutshell so we're finally, um, as I mentioned before, you've got questions, I've got answers. I really do um, want this time to be beneficial for you. So as those questions come to mind, if you think of anything, or honestly, if there's something that you've, that's been gnawing at you and you want to ask it and you don't know who, whether about the wedding planning process um, or about the business of weddings, um, please share it with me. And um, I'm not saying I have all the answers, but I will do my utmost best to, to answer them and, um, and to share with you my own advice and my experience. So I just wanted to share with you a couple things that um, people have, um, have shared with me that have commented about um, working with um, myself and my team. And I don't share this as a means of self-promotion uh, or to um, pat my own self on the back. But I share this because I truly believe that in business it's about teamwork and also about having the right um, tools behind you. So some of the things that have been shared um, is that, you know, KME is exceptionally organized, a well-oiled machine, can adapt to any situation, handle it with poise, doesn't miss a beat, not a single detail missed, pays attention to the bigger picture while never failing to miss the finer points. These specific references, these, these, um, these uh, comments Honestly, I truly believe that they come from the wedding day timeline <laughs> because that timeline in my is is my secret weapon as a wedding planner. And yes, we need to bring our personality um, and our joy into situations, but it really is about being prepared and being armed to handle things. And I believe that having a, a really well-crafted timeline will enable you to do the best job possible, not only for yourself, but for your clients and also for the people that you're working with and that are around you. A well-crafted timeline is the key to a successful event. Why do you say that for such a simple tool? Um, because honestly, at the end of the day, timing is what leads to the flow of, of the evening or of the day's happenings. That flow is what affects the mood or the atmosphere of the experience. That mood determines, like I said, experience. And finally, the experience is what makes the memories. So if we work all the way back, it can start with something as simple as having a really well thought out plan. So ask yourself if you're a bride or as a planner. So how do you want your day to be remembered? Or as a wedding professional, how do you want your clients to remember their day? And more importantly, how do you want your clients to remember their experience in working with you? So it all starts with the basics. 
sometimes we like to brush over the basics and look for um, just the complex details, but we've got to start somewhere. When you download um, my personal wedding day timeline template, you might look at it initial, initially and think, geez, this is really um, quite plain and bare. Um, but the reality is, is that no two weddings are the same. And so I don't believe in starting with something preset. I believe in starting from scratch. And starting with these essentials is what's going to help, help you build the, the bare bone basics of a timeline. So the first thing that you want to include in your timeline is um, wake up calls for both the bride and the groom, and if there's people staying over, their wake-up calls as well. Um, initially, the first things that start happening in the morning is hair and makeup. Um, for the guys, possibly, they're going to the barber, uh, shaving appointments. Other things that you can include in there are uh, manicure, pedicure appointments. So. Those sorts of things you want to outline on there when everything gets started. If people are not staying overnight and they are arriving, um, this is when you would include a bridal party and family arrival times. And be sure to list the specifics of their arrival. So uh, where is the bride and, and where is the bridal party arriving to? Where's the groom? Um, where's mom and dad? Which home were they arriving to? So be sure to include those location specifics. Then the next thing you want to input in there is your pinnacle timeline events. So you have your, these are your standard happenings that um, take place in a wedding, ceremony, cocktail hour, family photos, bridal party photos, grand entrance, dinner, speeches, first dance, um, bouquet toss, last call. So these aren't all of them, but these are those events that are going to transition you throughout the day. Another reason why I don't um, start with a preset template is because nowadays um, the order of events dra dramatically um, alters from wedding to, to wedding. So, for example, um, not everyone chooses to do the first dance as soon as um, they come in from their grand entrance. A lot of people choose to do it um, after. And lots of people choose to do first looks now that happen before the ceremony. So, um, so slot in all of those pinnacle events throughout the day. Then the last thing that you're going to um, schedule in there to get the bare bones of your timeline is the arrival and the departure of every single professional and the helper that is assisting and working to make your day happen. So this is you know, from your venue opening to your decorator arriving, caterer, florist, limo, DJ, officiant, photographer. Um, and don't forget to include people like your ushers and your MC and when the cake arrives. So. I want to say that um, this point, what you see here, the essentials, is where a lot of people actually stop with their timelines. They do these things, they input these, and then they think they're done. And if you go online and look at a lot of the samples or the how-to guides, this is what they walk you through. And those things are great. It's not that, that this information is not important or vital. It is. Um, but for, in my opinion, it's taking the next step and going further that is going to distinguish a basic timeline to a really well thought out and phenomenal timeline. Where does that rest? In the details. So details, details, details. Um, so expanding on where we started, where you want to move into next is listing the order of individuals that are um, included in activities that have multiple people. So those are things like the processional, which is walking down the aisle, the receiving line, the grand entrance, which is when you come in to your reception, the buffet dinner order, the speeches. So all of these happenings have quite a few people involved. So what you want to do, I'm going to take, for example, the grand entrance is you want to list the order of who is coming down, the first, so their full name, their first and their last name, as well as their relation. So if they are a bridal party member, you would list, you know, maid of honor, um, best man or bridesmaid. If they're a family member, you would write um, bride's dad or bride's mom, and you list those down in order. So basically, what you want to happen is somebody to be able to pick up the timeline and then call out the order. Because people are not thinking um, when they're getting ready to, to do something. They're not thinking about, well, when am I coming next? That's your job, um, with either as the planner or as a helper on the day, to be able to provide that order for people. So please make sure that you list in detail all of the individuals that are involved 
in those activities. Um, the next thing you want to do, um, this is a huge key and where the meat and bones of your timeline lies. You can make this as detailed or as vague as you want it to be, but my advice is that um, more detail is never bad. <laughs> so go over and above if you can or if you need to explain anything. And there are areas where um, there are a lot more directions um, where uh, than others. So. You want to explain what and who is involved in each activity and where the responsibility lies. So a very basic example and one, I chose this one because this is um, a lot of prompting cues throughout the day um, are basic but people don't think to break them down. So for example, you have the first dance. Well, the details for the first dance is we have the song title, but what happens if at two minutes the bride and group want it to fade out? That needs to be included. And then there's lots of responsibilities. The MC has to announce it so that everybody is prepared to watch, as well as the DJ needs to play the song. If there is a planner involved, there's another step there. The planner actually needs to prompt the MC for when we are about to do it. Then the MC can announce, and then the DJ can play the music. So for something as simple as the first dance, there is a lot of details that need to go to go into that. So, um, oh, I feel like I nope, I didn't forget something. Um, so moving into the don'ts. They're really more do's, but um, I call them the don'ts because um, these are uh, points that I find a lot of times are skipped or overlooked. And honestly, I can admit that this is something that I have finessed over the years. When I look at a lot of my older timelines, they didn't have um, these details in them. So, so these uh, are super important. So the first one is don't fail to account for transportation times. So this is for things like um, getting from hair and makeup appointments or um, from the get ready location to the ceremony or especially from your photo locations um, to each of them and then to the reception. So for example, um, a lot of times photographers will have uh, two set spots but then they'll just have on the timeline 4 to 6 p.m. is bridal party photos. But that needs to be broken down because the reality is you're not shooting for two hours. If at 4 o'clock you're going to leave for bridal party photos, then you need to list 4 o'clock is the departure to photo location 1. Then you need to list arrival at photo location 1. Then depart to photo location 2. <laughs> and then depart from photo location 2 and then to the reception. So really the goal is, is that Anyone who picks up that timeline should at any point in time be able to know where people are and, and, um, and what's happening. So transportation times are key. This includes, um, this is really important not only for photography but also for transportation for like the actual um, limo drop off and pick up schedule. So account for when the limo arrives, you need to account for um, the time that they actually are going to need to fill the limos and then depart. So the next point is don't just include the locations but not the addresses. Be sure that at any point of pickup or arrival that an actual address is shown. Um, yes, even if people have the addresses and even with GPS's now, it is so much easier and will make everyone's life um, just that much quicker and smoother during the day if the actual addresses are listed. So this is for things like get ready spots, drop off and pick up locations for the limos, um, photo spots, as well as the venues for your ceremony in your reception. Another don't is don't fail to account for transition times. So this is different from transportation times. This is transition points throughout the day. Um, and they're again something that a lot of people don't think about and I can admit that in my early years of wedding planning um, these were the things that actually pushed me behind on my timeline and ended up stressing me out because I hadn't accounted for for these for the transition between different activities. So 
Um, two examples of this is when guests are called to be seated. There's going to be different points when um, you ask everyone to be seated. So two examples of this are initially before the grand entrance, you're going to want everybody seated. So you're going to call them to their tables. Um, generally, this happens um, transitioning from cocktail hour to the reception. And another one is anytime guests are invited to go up and grab a drink at the bar um, or grab dessert before we still sh show a slideshow. Anytime guests get up, um, it's going to take anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes to get them back in their seats. And that does not account for the time you're giving them to go and do whatever it is that you're asking them to do. Another time for transition, um, which can actually eat up a lot of time if you don't um, account for it, is the time it takes caterers to clear plates between courses if it is not a buffet, um, between courses or between speeches. Um, if they need to tear down a buffet and reset up a coffee and tea or dessert station, all of these things take time. So for example, a lot of times a timeline will say, okay, dinner is scheduled from, let's just say, 5 o'clock to 6.30, so you have an hour and a half for dinner. Well, what is the actual breakdown of that? If you have a buffet, how long is it going to take you to get everybody through the buffet line, um, through the first course and seated? Um, and then if there's courses, how long is it going to take them to actually plate the first course? Once the first course is plated, then you need to account for how long it's going to take them to clear the first course plates before they are able to actually plate the second course. And in addition, that caterer is going to need five to ten minutes likely to transition into the next course. So when you are accounting for, for um, times, be sure to account for um, addressing those areas where there are a lot of logistics involved, such as dinner hour. So transportation times, list addresses of the locations, and be sure to account for transitions. Um, this is a big one and again kind of goes back to details, details, details. Don't only include pinnacle events and neglect smaller details surrounding it. Like I said, the more detail, the better. So here's a couple examples um, going into more depth of areas where a lot of people don't think to include details, but they're super important. If you don't include these details, it leaves lots of room for A, error, B, people to assume someone else is taking care of it, and C, questions on the day. <laughs> so, first example is transportation pickup. Um, um, including, you need to include who is in each vehicle. So, even if it's just, you know, a family car or, um, or whether it's a limo or a party bus, list those individuals, again, full names and relations as to who is getting into each vehicle. You want, with the timeline, um, I'm not sure if I've said this before, but essentially the point should be is that anyone should be able to pick up that timeline and follow it to a T. So, um, it needs to be dummy proof. <laughs> um, another example is the slideshow. I laugh when brides and grooms tell me that they want to have a slideshow because there's actually a lot of um, details that are involved in it, but people think that it's no big deal. So some of the things that you need to include is who has the equipment and is bringing it. A lot of times you need to know um, what type of equipment it is so that you can confirm with the venue that they can accommodate that type of equipment. Um, what format is the slideshow in? This has caused more headaches than I can tell you at weddings that I have done. So is it a CD or is it going to be playing from a computer? Is it on a USB drive or an external hard drive? Who is actually going to drop off the um, slideshow and the equipment? When are they dropping it off? Who is setting it up? who is testing it to make sure that it works, and who's playing it when it actually needs to be played. So there are all those itty-bitty details pertaining to a simple thing like a slideshow. Another thing, especially with the, um, the common occurrence now of candy bars and dessert bars, is um, things are coming from all over the place and there are lots of people involved in bringing that to life. So we want to include details like um, where are the goods coming from? So if they're coming from multiple places, you need to list all of those in detail. When is it being dropped off? Again, if there's more people involved, there's going to be multiple drop-off times. Um, does the actual um, items themselves, do they need to be refrigerated? 
Do they need to be plated? Like what are they coming in? What are they arriving in? On platters or in Tupperwares? Who is going to actually set up the dessert bar? When are they setting it up? Because if they set it up um, before the ceremony, nine times out of ten, okay, nine point nine 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 times out of ten, guests are going to eat it before they're supposed to. They see a candy bar, they see a dessert bar, and they dive in. So if you set it up early, do you really want to be leaving plastic um, saran wrap on it? Um, if it's just jars and containers, guaranteed they will open them up. Who is going to replenish the dessert bar or the candy bar as it gets eaten throughout the night? Um, and what do we do with all the leftovers? So again, another thing seems very simple. A lot of people choose a dessert bar because um, they think it's um, easier than doing a plated dessert. Um, but there's all those details that bring it together. So this is the key, as I've said before, to creating a really well thought out timeline and um, making things smooth on the day. And also, if you're um, not the bride and you're a planner or a wedding professional, a lot of these smaller details get jumbled, especially on the wedding day when you're moving quickly. And so you want to have those reference points and the answer to all those um, tiny nagging questions right then and there so you can, can reference them at any time. So let's talk about some of the don't forgets. Um, the first thing in which um, most brides forget about is including time to eat throughout the day. Um, that's breakfast, lunch, and especially snacks throughout photos because guarantee you're going to be starving after the wedding and chances are you likely won't be um, at the cocktail hour so you won't get that opportunity to, to share in it. So um, one thing I recommend is if you're working with a caterer, to talk to the caterer about having some food put aside for you separately, either in a to-go basket, um, um, along with possibly maybe a bottle of champagne. Um, so um, having that put aside so that you guys can take that with you, or as a planner that you can have that prepared and then provide that to the bridal party before they head off. So. Um, these next three points are really focused to you, my brides, and I, 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 I really want you to hear me out on this. They seem small and maybe not like that big of a deal, but this, to me, is where my heart less, um, rests. Don't forget to take your hands off and to trust those that you have left in charge. I know it is your special day, and I know you have this idea in your head of what you want it to be like, and I know that it is your once in a lifetime, once upon a time, but the, the reality is you've hired certain people for a reason, and I truly hope that you have taken the time to hire vendors that you really do trust. So at the end of the day, this is it. You've got one shot. So take your hands off and just trust that you have hired the right people. They are professionals for a reason and guarantee they are passionate about what they are doing and they want to serve you well. So the next thing is, is don't forget to stop and savor the moment. Your day, whether you like it or not, is going to go by like the blink of an eye. It will be so quickly. And so many times my brides come to me after the ceremony and they're like, Oh, wow, okay, that's over now. And then they get to the dancing and they're like, oh my gosh, the day's almost over already. <laughs> so whether you like it or not, it's just going to just slip past you. So when I say stop, I mean physically stop. Take moments throughout the, the day to stand still, to look around you, to take in the experience, to take in the people, and truly savor the moment. And when you're living those moments, Live them. Don't let your mind go somewhere else. So when you are standing up at the altar, looking into the eyes of your um, your husband-to-be, stare at him and look at him. Don't be thinking about what's coming next and, and focus what's being said and shared by the pastor or the officiant. Um, and when you hug your family and your friends, talk to them. When they ask you questions, engage. Um, just be fully present and don't let your mind wander. And the last thing is, and this is the most important thing, is stay focused on what matters most, regardless of what happens. The reality is, is that things are going to happen. I want the day to be perfect just as much as you do, but almost always there are glitches. Sometimes small, and sometimes they're really big. <laughs> and so you need to make that decision right now, 
today that no matter what happens, you are going to enjoy the day and be determined to, to live the experience. And when I say what matters most, I mean focusing on each other, focusing on your friends and your family, so basically the relationships and the people that are there celebrating with you, and the marriage waiting on the other side of the I do. As much as this day is so important to you, what really matters is what happens after when the dress has been dry cleaned and the cake has been eating. That's why we're celebrating today. So. These things are, are really my heart and, and, and why I'm passionate about um, giving you the tools to plan with ease is so that not only on the day, but even throughout the wedding planning process, you can stay focused on what matters and the stress and the overwhelm and the research and the time and all those things won't overshadow why you're even doing all of this. Planners and also other wedding professionals, I want to talk to you now um, and just address you about where my heart is. Um, really, your goal is allowing the client to stay focused on what matters, and that should be your ultimate goal at the end of the day. It's not about how the day looks or how it will add to your portfolio, or whether or not you're going to get referrals from this wedding, or what kind of connections you are making with other um, vendors and professionals that are there, or even how well you perform yourself. It is your job to remind your clients of the previous points that we just talked about and to shoulder the stress so that they can simply live the moment. So I think it's so important that before we walk into a wedding, we remember our, the heart of what we do and why we do and what the common goal is. And the next point in, which is something that I try and really um, encourage and drive into my team, is that it is about teamwork and a dedication to serve with excellence towards a common goal, and that that is what sets a successful event apart. And specifically as a planner, but it applies to every, um, every uh, wedding professional, it is not your job to play boss but to serve everyone, including other professionals, ensuring that they can do their job well and to feel looked after. As a planner, you are the gracious host and, and essentially the servant to all. So there should be nothing that you are unwilling to do. There should be no one that you um, are too rushed to talk to. But really understanding that it is is your job to be the common um, the common bond between the client and everybody else is there and that reminding people that it's all of us collectively as a whole coming together for that common goal which is giving our clients the ultimate experience and allowing them to focus on what matters that that is that is what we want to strive towards that is the excellence that we are looking for and that is ultimately at the end of the day what is going to set a successful event um, apart so so truly this is my heart in everything that I do and, and really what I want to inspire and encourage you as brides and as wedding professionals to really focus on. Okay, going back to the timeline now, I want to share with you some of, um, I put here tips from the pros, really they are um, my personal tips and things that I have learned and finessed over the years and continue to do. So we're always learning and we're always growing together. So um, the first one is, is be sure to include any helpers and odd jobs. This is um, things such as ushers, parking attendants, guest book attendants, the homemade desserts like we talked about, the slideshow. Who's taking home the gifts and the cards? At the end of the day, there is no job too small to be included in your timeline. If it needs doing, period, then it needs to be included. The next point is color code your timeline by individual and company. I know it can be overwhelming when you look at the timeline, all the color, <laughs> it starts to blur together after a while, but when you start to create timelines, 
the way that I'm I'm encouraging you to do it, they're going to start getting long and tedious and really, really detailed. And so rather than having that basic one to three page timeline, they're going to start end up being five pages. And I've had timelines that were 15 pages long. No joke. And so the reality is when you start giving those timelines over to people, they take one look at it and they want to either put it in their trash in their email or throw it out. They sure as heck don't want to look at it. Everyone is busy. And so by color coding, when you give out those timelines, you can say to that individual, look, I know this is overwhelming, but here is your color, here is your responsibility, and only focus on that. And I can't tell you the amount of people that come back and be like, oh, wow, thank you so much. So make sure that you color code your timeline and you give every individual where they whether they are simply a helper and dropping one thing off or if they are a company um, that has lots of to do's throughout the day the next thing is is that you need to give copies to all of the professionals plus the helpers plus I would encourage you to give it to the maid of honor or the best man I said here possibly the bridal party too. Um, if perhaps somebody in the bridal party is more responsible than the maid of honor or the best man, then you might choose um, to give it to one of them instead. Or um, I find as my clients get older, um, the bridal party all wants a copy. So I think as we get more responsible in life, everybody kind of wants to know what's going on and be informed. Don't just give it to them. Um, ask them to print it out and have it on hand on the day. A lot of people are going to come back and say, oh, well, I'll put it on my phone. Make sure or encourage them to print a physical copy because changes are going to be made throughout the day. And a lot of times our phones aren't always handy on the actual day, especially for um, the bridal party. Um, they might have a little clutch, but you want a physical copy so that they can tuck it somewhere and make sure that they have it with them all the time. Um, this is to brides who do um, do not have a coordinator there on the day. Make sure that you assign someone as the ringleader for the entire day. And that person needs to understand that they are the point person, that they are the person in charge. This person is the individual who vendors and helpers can check in with when they arrive um, or um or when they're leaving, and also they can uh, direct any of their questions or their concerns to them. This individual also needs to be someone that you are comfortable letting them make calls on your behalf and troubleshooting if need be. So, for example, if you're short on favors, they need to make a call on what to do. Um, if something breaks, what happens? If it starts to rain and you need to make a rain plan. Any logistical concerns, that person needs to be there. And same with once the wedding starts, if any of your guests have questions, um, such as, well, where where do I put the, the gifts? Or is there a card box? Or are they having a gift opening tomorrow? Any of those sorts of things. It's always beneficial to have a point person who can answer those questions. Because the reality is, Everyone will come to you as the bride and the groom if there is not a point person because nobody else can really quote unquote be trusted. I'm doing air quotes here where you can't see me. Um, so make sure you have a point person and that person knows that they are the ringleader. Include their full name, contact details on the timeline. And finally, this is a big one and probably the most time consuming and so a lot of people don't do it, is follow up with every single person that you have given a copy of the timeline to and here's the key, review it with them over the phone, not by email. People will tell you that they have reviewed it or that they have looked at it or sometimes I'll ask them, well, do you have any questions and they'll say no. The key is actually going through it with them. Now I don't mean going through all 15 pages with them, I mean just reviewing their color coded area that pertains to them. So it's it can be a quick call, you know, sometimes it's as much as or as short as two minutes, other times it could be 15 minutes, half an hour. But honestly, it is the key to um, allowing things to be smooth on the day. And also, um, if there are things that can't really be determined for the, on the day, you're um, prepared ahead of time to watch for it or to make that call on the day. 
So those are um, my personal tips um, from the pros. So we're going to move in a second into um, the sample wedding day timeline. But before we do that, I just want to say, while it is fresh in your mind, please go to the um, Q&A box and put any questions that you have in now. Um, that would be the best time because it's fresh in your mind. Um, and then uh, you'll have a, a chance after. But right now, if you have any questions percolating pertaining to the actual timeline itself, um, go ahead. You just scroll to the left-hand side of the um, screen. Your toolbar will pop, pop up with the Q&A, and then you can answer it there. So. I'll just give you a couple seconds to do that, and then we will move into um, uh, reviewing the sample. Okay, so I chose this sample timeline. It is an older one. Um, it's from 2013, but the reason that I chose this one is because um, it was a vastly, um, mostly a DIY wedding. It was atypical in a lot of um, what went on as far as um, setting up uh, beforehand and also on the day as well. There were tons and tons of helpers involved. So. I am not by any means saying that this timeline is perfect and I'm sure as you go through it you're gonna say oh well you know some of the things that she's telling me to do aren't necessarily there well first off I'm not perfect <laughs> um, um, so uh, please be gracious but um, it is a really good example of, of of how to apply some of these techniques that we have talked about today the other thing I want to point out too is all of those tips and tools are not necessarily going to apply to every single wedding um, and so that's the the long of it but there will be weddings where really there's just the short of it so so we've included the basic details initially the rehearsal time and the date the event date um, the venue everything was happening at um, at the, this camp and who the point person was which was me there was a lot of things that happened on the day um, prior and so I left those notes in there for the people who um, might be coming on site um, beforehand or um, might have questions as they look at the timeline so the first thing that happened in the morning is that the bouquets were dropped off so you can see the location was listed as well as what um, was included in the drop off then you can see actually before I move on I just want to point out so when you look at your sample timeline template basically all you're going to see is time activity details and responsibility so like I said before it can look very plain um, but obviously your time and your activities and the responsibility those are a lot of times just what you see on a basic timeline it's the details portion that we address that that's where the key is and that's where you're really going to spend the chunk of your timeline creation so okay so at eight o'clock was when the camp gates opened so we included the person that was going to open up the gate and again the address um, the wake up call and who is responsible for waking up the bride um, then the flowers and the decor arrived on site. Um, you don't need to list the site address if it's the same every single time. Um, and then um, I like to include, if there's going to be a lot of different layers of setup, um, basically what the focus is. Um, also, if you're going to be referencing any other um, sheets, so whether it's a contract you're referencing um, or a another outline, so such as a design outline or a floor plan or a layout, I like to include that on the timeline. So again, I've said set up according to the design plan, um, and then I've included that we're dropping off um, not at the house, but here at the venue, the cake topper, the boutonnieres, the number of them, the corsages, and that they're going to be left in the fridge. I arrived on site at 9 o'clock um, and my first uh, goal was to adjust the tables to the floor plan because if you go back up to the notes, the tables were set up by the family the night before. Okay, hair and makeup arrived. Um, again, I've listed the actual services here and what they were going to be having um, because a lot of times um, people don't remember or they don't know or there's questions. So. 
At 10 o'clock, the rentals arrived to the camp. Rentals are really hard to list absolutely everything in detail. So I basically usually include the um, rough categories and then I will um, excuse me, make sure somebody has a copy, if it's not me, of the actual rental order so that you can tick it off and review that ensure um, actually everything is there. And as a planner, let me just say to you that rentals a lot of times are wrong, so do not just assume that they are correct. Take the time to go through them. Um, then the chairs were set up for the, the ceremony, and again, I've referenced that it needs to be according to the floor plan, because if they don't know that, um, these two people were actually friends of the bride and the groom that were helping set up the ceremony chairs. They're just going to do it by the fly, you know, and not necessarily do it according to what the bride had hoped for. Okay, then the table prep happened. Again, I've listed out what was actually happening. The linens and the runners were going to go on the tables. Napkins were going to be put out according to the guest count per table. Planners, um, a lot of times the caterers have their own way of setting the tables. And so what I like to do um, is preset one table. Um, so that the caterer knows how to dress the table if you want it done a certain way. Um, and also the um, linen count, because a lot of times caterers um, feel that they're too busy to look at a floor plan to see the table count, because not every table is going to have necessarily eight people. I will do the napkins in advance if I have time, and then they know that where a napkin is, there needs to be a place setting. Um, sticky notes were put under the table with a guest count just in case um, if we didn't choose to do the napkins. And again, that was based on time, um, whether or not I had enough time to put the napkins out. Then the centerpieces and the head table banner were put out. And then the setup of the miscellaneous things. And again, I've noted there that it is according to the design plan. And the cocktail hour was set up. At 12 o'clock, the initial catering staff arrives. A lot of time, the catering staff arrives at different times. And so it's really important to specify what they are focusing on. So this, their initial arrival, was focusing on dressing the tables with the dishes and the cutlery and the glassware. The cake arrived. The, the cake was actually going to be set up. And then I was responsible for getting the cake topper on and out from the cooler. At 1 o'clock, the DJ was going to arrive. I've noted here that they were doing both the ceremony and the reception music and that it was going to be two separate sound systems, so essentially two full setups. Um, also, they were responsible for bringing the equipment, so I did not note here what the actual equipment was, um, um, but they were setting it up. I noted that I was going to be providing them with a slideshow and that the slideshow was a CD, so it really didn't matter as far as equipment went as long as it could be played um, on something. Then the ceremony decor was set up. Um, okay, at 1.40, the associate, so not the main photographer, arrived at the bride and the groom gets ready spot. We've listed the get ready spot, and the reason for their arrival was to capture the guys getting ready. Again, a lot of times what will happen is people will list, oh, the photographer arrives. Okay, but if there's two photographers, generally there's a reason, and if the bride and groom are in different locations or even in different rooms of... Um, in, a ho in the same hotel, they're going to split. So who is going where? You need to know that as the planner um, and as the bride, you want to give um, the photographers that opportunity to figure out in advance where they're going to be going. Hair and makeup would be finished at 2 o'clock, um, and then the main photographer would arrive um, at the girls get ready spot and to capture that. I always try and note on there for the bride and groom to wait to get the dress on um, because sometimes they get so excited that they just want to put it on. Um, at that point, I would confirm the seating plan. Okay, we've noted here that 2.30 is when the limo, we used only one limo for this wedding, so they would initially pick up at um, the groom's house, which was Paul's house. Um, we've noted the address again and also that it would be the groom and the parents that were going into the limo. So it was not the groomsmen at that point. Um, then the second set of the catering staff arrived at the camp and their purpose was simply to unload and prep the kitchen. The groomsmen would depart at the same time. Um, here is a really good tip that I didn't um, include, but planners, um, I always ask the 
either the photographer or the bridal party to have someone text me um, at any point when they are leaving somewhere um, so that I am prepped and ready for their arrival. Um, it's important for a couple things. In the ceremony, you don't want to have a bunch of lag time. So for the women especially, when they arrive, I want to have everybody seated already so that the limo pulls up and right away, bam, we can open the door and we can start the ceremony. There, there's not any sitting and jittering or they don't have to wait for forever in the limo. Um, and also another great point where this is helpful is when they've gone for bridal party photos and are returning for the grand entrance. I want to have everybody seated and sitting at their chairs by the time they arrive. So again, they arrive, line up quickly, bam, we open the doors and they enter in. Because if we remember what we talked about earlier, it's that it can take anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes to get people seated. So that prompting from whoever's texting me to say that they are leaving enables me to have everybody ready or as best as I can have everybody ready so please know that nothing is always ever perfect and just because I'm giving you all these things don't think that it always is just smooth and, and flawless all the time but we do our best to try and be prepared and make it as smooth and flawless as possible so um, at 3 o'clock that was when the design was going to need to be done at the latest. Um, then the bartender arrived. Um, the first bartender, you'll note there's two. This bartender was responsible for um, prepping the ceremony and the water and the drink station. Um, that's when the MC was going to arrive as well. I always ask the MCs to come and introduce themselves to me as the planner or to the point person bride, send them and drag them there because things will change throughout the day and you want to be able to review anything at that point. While you as the planner or the point person are excuse me, the host, they are the individual who plays the host, the face, they are the face of the event so they need to be kept informed. Um, the limo was going to drop off um, uh, the guys at that point and the groomsmen would also arrive at the same point. And that was when their focus would turn to welcoming guests and to mingling. When they arrived I would give them their root mirrors. The music would commence all at the same time. The water would be put out for the guests. We've noted that they needed to go into galvanized tubs with the water and the ice. And also that the photographer would be departing um, for Camp Howdy at that time. So bartender two arrived um, at uh, 3.30 and they were um, focusing on preparing and setting up the bar area. So um, I'll just say now because it's on my mind is that you're probably thinking well you know this is you know as far as like a caterer goes this is a lot of detail and caterers don't typically share this information but you want to ask every single vendor you know about their own protocol and about their process so again and that at any point in time you can be informed as to what people are doing and where they are at so that's why it's so important to include to know like you know bartender one and then bartender two and what is their focus so um, the guests would start arriving at 3.30. I always note who is to greet them, so if that's ushers or if that's me, um, and dispersing the family boutonnieres and the corsages. Um, this is very basic. I've listed the family names. What I do now um, is, because I have more helpers, is we'll list the family name plus the relation and whether or not they're getting a boutonniere or a corsage. So again, make it as foolproof as possible so any helper or intern or whatever can pick up the timeline and do that part for you. It doesn't need to just necessarily be you. Um, the limo would return and pick up um, the brides and the bridesmaids. We've listed the address. Bad Kaylee, she didn't actually denounce uh, who is going in there, but I've listed bride and bridesmaids. And then the difference. So there you see from the 3.30 to the 3.40, you see that um, um, transition time of getting them actually into the vehicle. And again, asking the bridesmaids to text me when they are leaving. Officiant arrives, limo drops them off, um, and I've asked here, noted here, that when the brides arrive that they need to stay behind the shack um, and stay in the limo until I come and find them. A lot of times they get excited and get out, but you don't want guests to see them, so make sure they know to stay in there, and I've given that to the responsibility of the maid of honor. Um, the ceremony starts. If there's any announcements, um, I don't just rely on the officiant or the pastor to have this written down. I remind them again of those announcements. So, And then queuing, the processional. 
So here you are going to see we talked about listing everybody um, and the order. So we've listed that the parents were going to go and the officiant and the groom. Again, this is an older one. I would recommend or suggest that you have full names and relations um, listed on there as well. The songs, and then you see the order of the grooms, men, and then of the um, bridesmaids. Sometimes what I will do is right. You'll see here this note says first. Um, uh, first to last to walk, um, make way to the furthest point away from the center of the bride and groom and file inwards from there. And so this is just to um, remind people of when they walk down where they're actually going to be standing. Because a lot of people don't know the actual order at the front of the ceremony. So that's just a quick reminder. Um, uh, during the ceremony, that's when the cocktail hour drink station would be prepped and filled up. Yes, you want to include any of those prompting cues. So anybody that needs to do something that needs to be listed, don't just assume that they know when to do their job and how. <laughs> Foolproof, my friends. So I've listed here what they actually needed to fill up, cucumber water, punch, and sangria. Certificate signing will happen, and then I've listed another announcement. I usually ask the officiant to prompt everybody because it is more natural, and then I myself will stay behind and then kind of herd people into the direction that they need to go. The recessional happened, the officiant departed, and then they left for um, family photos. Um, here it says according to the photo list provided. I want to say to you, and again this is another thing that I would encourage you to do and what I do now, is that I actually include the entire family photo list in the timeline um, so that there's no guessing games and the photographer then doesn't need to have a ton of different um, documents. It's all there in one. So include, you know, what I would typically have written there is um, bride's immediate family and then next to it it would have the person, the full name and details, plus their relation, and then listing all the photos down there that need to be taken down or need to be captured, sorry. Um, and then the cocktail hour and the specifics of the cocktail, what that included. Um, and at that time, the chairs were going to be transitioned to the reception. Again, these were family friends that were going to be doing it, so I prompted them that I would direct them on where to put the chairs out, and um, also that it would be according to the place settings at each table. That might be a given to you, but trust me, it is not a given to helpers, and they will put the chairs wherever they want, and there will not be the right amount at each table. So. Um, P markers would be moved inside. Um, then the bridal party photos. Um, this was easy. They were just in and around the property, and so all we really had to address was that they'd be on the dock first, and then they would be in the forest. Um, then the bar opens. Um, I usually um, note um, what is included in the bar, especially if the bride and groom are stocking the bar themselves, um, or if you are stocking the bar yourself, and if there's any other special notes like, um, please don't use this unless you absolutely have to, or only certain people can drink this type of thing, include that in there. MC announcements, candles lit, and then guests are welcomed into um, the reception. So you can see here again between 6 and 6.10, I've left room for transitioning times to get people seated. Um, and then during that time, that's when the drink station would be moved inside um, and the bridal party would start making their way back. Again, we've prompted them to text me um, on their way back. And when they get there, we've listed um, their lineup order um, for getting ready for the grand entrance. Then you'll see that cue point for the grand entrance. I am to cue the MC, and then the DJ will play. And we've listed the song. I uh, also just want to point out here that when, so grand entrance is one point, but you'll see that I have actually separated on two different lines, the DJ and the MC, because you can't give them the same color. So if there's multiple prompting cues, give them different lines. Noted that the bar is closed during dinner. And then we've included the welcome here and the specifics. So with MCs, um, a lot of times they have their own um, schedule and they want to create their own um, verbiage. Um, so what I will just include on the timeline for them is just prompting cues. And if there is any need to knows like this needs to be said, then I will include it on there. 
if they want more help, then they can reach out to me and I will actually help them with the script. Um, but this is where we, we start with the basics. So I've listed here that they need to welcome the guests, inform themselves. They need to let people know that the bar is going to be closed during dinner. They need to let them know that wine and water is served at the tables um, and that the bar will reopen later for dessert and dancing. So you just want to give all those house rules to the MC so that they don't have to think about them. Okay, and then dinner would happen. Um, a lot of times, uh, brides and grooms forget about how to distinguish the order of the tables, so make sure that that is thought about and included on the timeline. And then prompt and remind your caterers to refill and pour wine and water at the tables if that is being done. Okay, MC announcement, this is giving guests, again, we're giving them a chime of um, transition, is welcoming them to grab a drink before speeches, um, and that the, I'm reminding them again that the bar will be closed throughout speeches. Okay, and then reminding, prompting again that the guests be seated, then we move into speeches. You can see that we've included the order plus the relation because sometimes the MCs will forget. Um, cake cutting would move in, and again, we've given them prompting cues to welcome everybody up and to let them know that directly following the cake cutting, they can go and get um, some candy to be enjoyed throughout the slideshow. Our song is listed there, and then again, I've given um, prompting cues for the caterer um, for what to do. They need to plate the, the, so when they go and cut the cake, don't just tell them to cut it. What do they need to do with it? They need to plate it and then it's going to be stationed. They needed to know that they need to save the top tier and put it in the box provided and, and um, to only cut the bottom, um, the bottom slab. So then the candy, candy bar would open. We moved into the slideshow, which happened at 8 o'clock, and directly following that, we did the first dance. There was no special um, uh, instructions for for the dance. They danced through the whole thing. Um, and then, uh, but we did put for the mother and uh, mother, son, bride, and uncle, it was a little bit different, um, dance, was asking the bridal party to join halfway through. So we gave the DJ that prompting cue. Um, and then uh, a fire was lit outside, and again, that was family friends that did that. The photographer took them outside for sparkler shots. A bouquet a toss happened, and then the late night um, food came out. So the s'more station, we put there that it needed to be prepped. Um, same with the popcorn bar, that it needed to be prepped. Um, and how it needed to be prepped and where. And then, um, again, the, the prompting cue of it actually opening. So. The photographer departed, and then I departed at that point for a couple hours before I came back to do the teardown. So you will have your last call, your last dance, and then teardown. And list the specifics of your teardown. It's so important. Who is doing what? Everybody will take their hands off at the end of the night. If there are helpers that say they're going to help, a lot of times they don't. Um, or they're tired and they're having fun and and so they will wait for somebody to um, come to them so list the specifics so somebody can actually go up to them and say you are responsible for this so we've announced here that you know all the food and bar was to be done tear down by the caterer that um, I was responsible for all the brides personal belongings and that the family was going to deal with the tables and the chairs and then finally those final pickups of the um, limos and where those limos were going so so that is the um, timeline, the example timeline, and I hope that really helps you see some of those practices put into use. So um, we're going to move to Q&A, and um, I just wanted to say if you, like I said before, it doesn't necessarily have to be about the wedding day timeline itself. It can be about um, any part of the wedding planning process or um, the business of wedding planning. So. I'm going to um, stop this lovely uh, screen share so you can see my face. <laughs> Hello. And uh, I'll give you a couple moments to, um, uh, to put in any questions. So. OK. OK, I see one here, which is a really awesome question. So the question is, how important is it for vendors, so wedding professionals, to receive the entire timeline versus just their parts? Um, OK, honestly, I think it's super important um, because a lot of times 
people think that their job only affects themselves, but it doesn't. It, uh, it, it plays into other people's jobs as well. So they might have questions, and so rather than coming to you, they can look at the timeline and see how that relates. The other thing is, is that they will see um, basically overall flows of the day. So, for example, if they are coming in at noon, they might want to know, um, so a caterer, for example, they're coming in at noon and they're thinking to themselves, okay, well, yes, I need to dress the tables, but when is the rentals arriving and where are the rentals going to be kept? Even if it wasn't their job to receive the rentals, then they can go back to the top of the timeline and see, oh, okay, they're actually arriving the day before and this person is receiving them and, oh, they're going to be left in the kitchen. Great. So then when they get there, if they can't find them, they know where they're supposed to be and they actually know who to go to because they know who received them and if the proper things are listed out they can actually confirm and double check so it's super important in my opinion that you send everybody the entire timeline and that's why I say color code coordinating the timeline is so important because then they don't have to look at the whole thing and they don't need to be overwhelmed and if you're doing your due diligence and calling them, like I suggested, and actually reviewing it with them, they'll see that it's really not that overwhelming. And you can make a joke about it if you want. And I know, I know, I'm super detail-oriented. It's really annoying. But you know what? At the end of the day, I have to tell you, I have never, ever had somebody come back um, after working with me and saying, you know, I think your timeline was pointless. Um, Almost always, um, especially after somebody works with me the first time, they will come and be like, well, you know, I thought you were kind of crazy in the beginning with all that huge timeline, but I see now, like, why, and wow, things ran smoothly, and, and that sort of thing. So I think it's really important to, um, to send them everything. Okay. Um, I can't seem to... Oh. Marcy, I hope you found the chat. Um, um, if you did not find it, it's you just on the left-hand panel, you can click um, the chat uh, button, and the Q&A is just below that. So um, I hope you found that, my friend. Okay, next question. Um, when in the planning process should the timeline be made? This is... Um, a very hard one to give a definite answer because I believe that it is a wedding by wedding basis but I will say this this the earlier the better so when you go um, different how I broke up the different parts and so I explained the essentials and then you moved into the details what I like to do is as soon as you know any details from the essentials I start plugging them in so the minute I start working with a client or if you are a bride um, uh, as soon as you start your wedding planning process open up that template and start inputting what you know even if it's just a rough idea put it down there and and as um, details and things come into play and you you know what they are put them in there and slot them in there then the second uh, stage which is moving into the detail section that I typically don't do until you know I can do it as early as three months out but honestly the vast majority of it happens the last six weeks that's when all of those nitty-gritty little details are finalized especially in the follow-up meeting so for planners if you a lot of planners what they do is they come in at the last point so if you are a planner that doesn't create timelines normally what I would suggest you do is take the timelines that your brides and grooms are giving you and then create a new one so because most times they're only going to give you the essentials of what we talked about and it's your job to then move into the details so apply those basics onto the timelines bring that timeline to the meeting and then start asking the questions that you need to ask in order to fill out the details so start right away as soon as you can but you will do the nuts and bolts of creating and finessing and putting in all the details closer to the wedding day so Possibly that's three months out if you have a really um, 
um, with it bride and groom who are on top of things, but nine times out of ten it's going to be closer to the day. So whenever that um, six week mark, one month out, um, I have had clients who no matter how much I prompted them, they did not um, get those details to me and it was you know two weeks before the wedding day and, and then I was doing the details. But honestly I, I really don't suggest that. And on this point, um, to both brides and planners, I want to share this with you. Get those timelines to your vendors the earlier the better. So I don't mean like six weeks out, but if you can get those to them three weeks, sometimes a month before the wedding day, it gives you ample time to follow up with them by email to A, ensure that they have received it, and then B, have them set aside the time to review it together over the phone like we talked about. And you will be so much more at ease that everything is taken care of. As a bride, you'll be quicker to be able to take your hands off, and as a planner, you will not be as stressed. You will go into the day knowing, okay, I've reviewed everything and I've done my part. I have to just, you know, um, do what I can now on the day. So get those timelines out earlier. Don't necessarily wait for the last minute. So, so that's that. If there's any other questions, then um, uh, feel free to uh, share them. Um, I really hope that um, you found this time together beneficial and um, that it's going to help you to take your timelines to the next level. Um, it's going to take practice, <laughs> practice, practice, practice. And I can tell you that when I first started doing timelines um, like this, it would take me hours and <laughs> I spent forever creating these things. Um, but now it's just become habit and, and it's very natural and, and easy and, um, and, and I actually find it really fun now. So um, don't be discouraged in the beginning and don't feel like it's just this huge to-do that's overwhelming. Just take it step by step. And um, if you, like I said before, if you want a copy of the actual slideshow so you can see those steps and, and those tips, um, just tackle one slide at a time or one point at a time. So. Um, I wanted to say that um, I'm very keen to get to know you and to hear about, um, if you're a, a professional, to hear about your business and to hear about your goals and your aspirations and how I can help you and as a bride to hear just how your wedding planning is going and so um, I really want to get connected with you and, and learn about you and the best place um, for me to do that is through social media. So I want um, just to give you those um, those, uh, what are they called? <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, my social media links, my names where you can find me. Um, well, there's lots of, of, of social media outlets where you can find me. These two are the predominance where I interact with, um, with colleagues and with clients and, and just with, um, with fans. So, um, Facebook, you can find me at Keely Michelle events at be my own wedding planner. And yes, we can be personal friends, um, which is Kaylee dash Michelle Vienstra and on Instagram, you can find me at Kayla Michelle Beanster or Be My Own Wedding Planner. So please come find me. Don't be shy. Say hi. Ask questions. I honestly do my utmost best to answer every single um, comment or inquiry. And um, I really do want to get in touch and get to know you. So that's where true joy is for me is in um, getting to know people and making those connections. Um, if you want more information on um, DIY wedding planning or on the opposite, the, the business of weddings, um, these are the two main places you can find me, be my own wedding planner at kaylamichelle.com. I have put them, those links in, um, um, in the, if you go to, I believe it's the showcase, which is the left hand button, um, then you will um, see them there. But um, please go there and know that I put a great deal of time and effort into creating um, resources and tools and blog posts and articles that I really believe will be beneficial and helpful because my heart rests in that. Um, I don't just put out content to simply create content. Um, I'm writing 
with, you know, a person in mind and you are that person. So there are lots of great tools and resources and um, and so I encourage you to go there and, and to take advantage of them. So um, thank you so much for taking time out with me. And like I said before, I hope this was helpful. Um, go and find me on social media and, and just uh, share with me, you know, um, how you found the webinar, what you enjoyed most, maybe what some of your best takeaways were. Um, I would love to provide more webinars. So if you have any ideas or things that you want me to talk about, um, feel free to, to drop me a line. So thank you again, and I hope you have an awesome weekend, and I really look forward to, to getting to know you if I don't, and if I know you already and you are a friendly face and a friend, um, I'm just very, very grateful for your support. So please know that it doesn't go unnoticed, and um, I really appreciate it. So uh, God bless, and have a wonderful weekend. Bye, everybody.